pivot. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in both partnered and solo dancing. Cassie has about 22 years, I have about 24. And I believe Cassie has something else to add to that tonight. <laughs> yeah, because don't you know that Alicia also has over 12 years of experience in music, music theory, singing, instruments. And I have, I, I tried to do the counting, but I've basically been doing it my whole life. So like 30 years of writing experience. So for tonight's episode, we're talking about storytelling and choreography. And in particular, we're going to be analyzing Jordan and Tot's exhibition choreography, Heathens, from 2017. And uh, we're going to do this in two parts. So we're actually going to let you watch the music video for the song first before showing you the routine, because just a little extra context for the song can be really helpful in this analysis. So allow me to grab it, that link. Yeah, I just, I add to you. Yes, please grab it. <laughs> I have it, grab it. Link is in the chat for the music video. Go ahead and give it a watch. And when you get back, we'll send you the Jordan Todd link. Dropping into the chat, <laughs> Jordan and Todd's routine to that song. Go ahead and give it a watch. Uh, and when you get back, we'll talk storytelling and choreography. Oh, so good. I don't get tired of the song or the routine. Me either. <laughs> yeah. All right. Spiel time. Everybody excited? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we obviously can't give you an entire uh, boot camp in storytelling tonight. Um, but when I upload the replay, I'll try to find um, a link to the long conversation I had with Rosie Thor, uh, a fellow Westie, but also writer, um, published author of the YA a sci-fi book, Tarnished Are the Stars. Highly recommend it. Um, and she also has a new book coming out in 2022, Fire Becomes Her. Yes. Anyways, we're all super proud of Rosie. Um, but, yeah, but uh, she and I had a whole conversation on storytelling and we like analyzed the Princess Bride. It's great. So if you want more storytelling nerdiness, I will, I will put the link up there in the replay. Um, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about three-act structure in storytelling because it is really fairly simple to understand the bare bones of it. And uh, first of all, three-act structure, not each act is not the same length. So act one is 25% of the story. Act two is 50% of the story. Act three is 25% of the story. Some people just do four acts and there's a midpoint right in the middle of the standard act two. The numbers really don't matter. What is happening across three act structure is escalating conflict and tension and stakes. And um, what makes a story dynamic is characters attempting to reach their goal and then either achieving it and then there's a big old but at the end, so yes but, or they fail and it becomes a no end and they're continually trying to move forward to their end goal. And usually there's, you know, villains and all that kind of stuff. Um, but one thing that musicality and storytelling share is act breaks. In dancing, we call those phrase changes. So when a phrase changes from one phrase to another, it's a change in the music and you need to acknowledge that in your dancing. And then as for storytelling itself, Act one, act two, act three is beginning, middle, end. And you need to be able to relate those things. Now, if we talk about heathens in particular, what I love about how they did storytelling in this particular choreography is, A, they have a prologue <laughs> of all things. I know you don't get that competitively. Like, you don't get to do that with a classic routine, which is why it's so cool getting to see Jordan Tot do exhibitions now, yeah. because they can do so much more. Um, but that prologue sets up a really clear story that they're breaking out of the crazy house, right? <laughs> um, Arkham, right? That's that's the name in the DC yes. universe. Anyways. Yes. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> my DC knowledge, my Marvel knowledge. Sorry, people. <laughs> um, 
but uh, so they're breaking out. And then there are a couple of ways you can actually interpret the choreography as a story. Uh, one is just linear progression. And it's just the one night crazy story of them breaking out of Arkham and actually achieving freedom at the very end. Um, or the other is kind of bookended. So the act one, they have already achieved freedom and then act two is them telling the story of them breaking out and then act three is just them playing because they're free to be their crazy <laughs> heathen selves <laughs> and of course there are some other interpretations but the fact that there is a clear beginning middle and end to the choreography is what allows it to have storytelling and it escalates and what that allows us as audience members to do is to, I like the metaphor of you want to get the audience in the car with you before you take them on a road trip. And something that I see and I struggle with when watching choreography, particularly in West Coast Swing a lot of the time, is they already walk onto the floor assuming we're already in the car with them. And that can happen in a number of ways because if people don't automatically know the song, and you start acting at this extreme end of emotions that can create a disconnect. It's like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand. You're just grasping to understand the whole time and you're not actually going on an emotional journey at all. Um, whereas if you take the time to slowly bring the audience in and give them just enough storytelling so they understand where emotion is coming from and then escalate from there, it can be so much more powerful and impactful. So... I think that's my vomitorious spiel. Do you want to add anything to that, Alicia, before we go to the screen share? Um, not necessarily. Uh, Kate said, I saw it live when it broke the first time. Looked like she broke her face. She landed so hard. It was just after the trick debut, too, so it wasn't as surprising. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, was I was there live, <laughs> and it was it was a lot. <laughs> um, everyone was, like, giving them a round of applause for a very long time um but i believe she had to go get stitches in her chin uh before the next performance the next day yeah <laughs> so uh i also wanted to add that the little section that you see at the beginning of the video where there's all of those clips that are kind of flying past um they had that up on the screens on each side of the floor at the open so that played right before they came out so it's it was um it's a little different seeing it the way that they have it with the video versus how they had it with those screens up right before they entered. So I just wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that in particular is a really good setup for like the very beginning of when they're, you know, coming out onto the floor. So yep. anyways, I think yep. we can... And move to our screen share. To the screen share. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. Can you sense fading? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, do we actually want to frame through any of this prologue or should we just skip to the the dance? Probably just skip. Right through it. I mean, it All doesn't right. really matter. Well, I can go. Let's let's get some uh, crazy Jordan Todd. I'll skip ahead a little bit because uh, one of the things that sells the story is how excellent their um the acting that they bring to their performance yep love the makeup <laughs> guys gotta watch out for crazy jordan <laughs> where they filmed this <laughs> i know right todd but is I so love... amazing at like just choice eye contact yep I love that, okay. and I love how she brings this exact character into the whole routine. Yeah, It's not just like, oh, this is what's happening at the beginning. It's throughout. <laughs> yep, same with Jordan. <laughs> All right, so we are escaping Arkham. Stay to the US open floor. I also love how they coordinated to do special lighting with the, um, oh, do you want to let Aaron in? Yeah, did it. <laughs> Uh, they did really great lighting um, for mm -hmm. this performance. I also really like that they didn't keep this lighting the whole time. Mm -hmm. 
it's just at the beginning. And I think that that's a really great choice because like the little like preamble video was so like dark itself. I think it was a really good choice to bring the audience into it live in like a really dark situation Mm -hmm. and then kind of light things up. Yeah. And you can also think of these two very strong spotlights on them as like search spotlights Mm -hmm. after escaping from the insane asylum. Yes. And uh, just their posing as they come out as if they're in straight jackets. It's just such a great extra little detail. It just really adds to the storyline that they're breaking out you know Mm -hmm. and it's it's clear enough that I would say this would work even without the prologue video Mm -hmm. um I agree I think it would um though I do think that the vibe would be a little bit different because it wouldn't be as closely tied to like the movie and the themes of the movie um I feel like that is the like main part that that like preliminary video brought in is kind of bringing it into like the movie world almost. Mm -hmm. There's so much emphasis on eye contact, like just drawing us in as an Mm -hmm. audience and really taking their time with, because this is essentially act one of the story. So they're focusing on character drawing us in as an audience before escalating things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, they're also doing that, like just their entire entrance is very prolonged. Like all of their movements are kind of dragged out. It's really intriguing to start something slower Mm -hmm. as long as there's some buildup to it. Yep. And I love this part. Like as characters, wow. it's like we're in, we're escaping with them. Mm-hmm. We we are the heathens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are we are with them. Um and that it's not quite audience participation, but um it uh, almost is. It almost is. <laughs> like, like we're it. we're in on the joke. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's one of the best when you've done a story well, when the audience feels like they're a part of it, they're not just observing it yeah yeah like I remember um I knew rewriting be our guest for Rose City happiest event on earth 2020 um was going to be amazing but being in the room with like almost a thousand people singing along to the rewritten lyrics I had written was a lot (laughs) it was amazing (laughs) I love that we kind of have some very intentional pieces and there's just some like movements in between, like the, like this part right here is very intentional, bringing us in. Um, The walking on was very intentional, but there's some, I don't want to say filler things, but just kind of not as intentional in terms of the story you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so we're coming up on the first phrase change but we're still going to be in act one so they spend two phrases in act one but for this one the lights come on yeah to help transition us. So we haven't quite ramped up to the full power of the song yet, but the light change, it's just, it's so simple, but it helps carry us through because these two phases can feel very slow and lethargic Mm -hmm. um, if they're not choreographed appropriately. Um, And the lighting change just adds that little bit of extra yeah and they're still focusing on being slow 
But what I love about this phrase in particular, I think <laughs> I, I, when we were talking about it yesterday, I was like, musical gradient. Because <laughs> uh, it, it's like they take the low energy of the phrase before and the high energy of the next phrase where we break into act two and they kind of bleed them together back and forth. So we have yep. some fast elements and then we go back to slow elements. And it's such an amazing way to bridge the gap between act one and act two. Mm -hmm. um, this is also the point where the lyrics come in. Um, up until this point, it was just instrumental. Mm -hmm. Would you like to share the lyrics with us for yeah. this first phrase? Yeah. So our first phrase, it's all my friends are heathens, take it slow, wait for them to ask you who you know. Please don't make any sudden moves. You don't know the half of the abuse. So they're really tying in the sudden moves in to actually the whole thing, really, mm -hmm. because this is the particular phrase that repeats itself throughout. Um, and they are really taking that and uh, bleeding that into the choreography really well. Mm -hmm. I just want to talk about this moment i love this so much it's so mm -hmm. simple but it is so unbelievably powerful yeah like um it's mesmerizing especially like the timing of them rocking back and forth together and mm -hmm. um jordan whoops went back too far please hold <laughs> uh <laughs> And Jordan catching, catching her face. face. Yeah. 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 It's a really smart piece of choreography because if he, so she's hooked onto his legs. So theoretically, like he doesn't need to do anything to support her. Like his mm -hmm. uh, left hand is free basically. So if he were to just stay there the whole time and just kind of rock with her, not do anything, his hands would just be kind of to his sides. And that would be a little bit awkward, quite honestly. So it's really smart that they added a hand for him in with what she's doing. So it just really flows all together. It's not like a separate thing for him. It's like they become kind of one unit moving mm -hmm. together. And I think that's a really smart thing for them to... Um, bring into this choreography because I mean they they're you know in the storyline they're escaping something together right so mm -hmm. trying to at the very beginning bring us into the idea of them being like one unit and working together I think is very very smart mm -hmm. just look at this face I know <laughs> So now uh, to bring it back to something I mentioned earlier, imagine if there had been no prologue and this had been the first move <laughs> in the choreography. We'd have been like, Jordan, you okay? <laughs> uh, should we be concerned? It, it would be like, yeah, it's Jordan and Todd. Of course, we're going to love it, but we, we wouldn't be in the car yet. Whereas mm -hmm. at this point in the real choreography, we're like, so invested and mesmerized in what's going on mm -hmm. that that level of almost caricature acting is very appropriate for what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. And I also really like that they're individually showing different emotions, um, but then also bringing it back to them as a unit. Mm -hmm. I think it helps with their individual characters. Yep. <laughs> I love Jordan's hand on his face. <laughs> All right. It reminds me, oh man, I'm dating myself here, but that old sitcom Third Rock from the Sun uh -huh. where the alien salute was to like slap your own forehead, <laughs> run your fingers back over the crown of your head like part way, flip your hand around and then push your fingers down over your face like that. Um, Anyways, <laughs> please tell me I'm not the only one that remembers that. Oh, I, I remember that. Oh, good. 
wasn't something that I particularly watched frequently, but I, I do <laughs> all <recall> that. <laughs> Before John Lithgow was our quad. <laughs> So we're coming up on the next phrase change, which is where we're actually going to be breaking into act two of the story and the choreography. And you can see how right here, they're now actually taking up more space on the floor. They're mm -hmm. traveling, they're ramping up to that phrase change. And this is really like the first really dramatic movement that they have. Mm -hmm. And here's the phrase change right here. <laughs> the way Jordan is biting his lip <laughs> is just so excellent. I just so, think this was the perfect oh, piece for them. Um, in terms of the characters, I think that the intensity is just perfect for them. Mm -hmm. So now that we're in act two of the story, things have escalated. There's more energy, they're taking up more space, they're gonna be moving faster. Um, I'll let you talk about the lyrics in a second. Yes. Um, but if uh, we go back to like the various interpretations of the story, like um, in one of them, this is, they've now made it out of Arkham, but now they have to like, they're being chased by the police. They just gotta go, go, go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, whereas in the other interpretation where act two is the entire story of them breaking out, <laughs> this is them starting to break out of Arkham. So it's a um, just two different ways of reading it that is are both really interesting to think about. Um, uh, another way that is really fun to refer to act two in storytelling is either the promise of the premise uh, or the fun and games. So Act two is where a lot of your uh, like movie trailer moments happen. It's the stuff that you bought the ticket for to see. So um, do you remember that movie where Jim Carrey got like all of God's powers? Bruce Almighty, yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, so that, that one's a really good example because he gets his powers at the break into act two. And so him starting to use them with wild abandon uh, that's that's act two that's the fun and games and then that creates problems and then that's the midpoint um, but he doesn't get the powers until act two so hopefully that's a an easier way to relate to how act two is different from act one yeah so in terms of lyrics it's actually the exact same as the first uh first phrase so mm -hmm. again it's all my friends are heathens take it slow wait for them to ask you who you know please don't make any sudden moves you don't know the half of the abuse however the music for this part like the lyrics are the same but all of the like instrumental behind it is a lot more intense so even though it's repetitive um it's bringing us into a different thought with it mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you hear it slowly the first time, it's like, it's take caution. All my friends mm -hmm. are heathens. <laughs> Don't scare them. <laughs> <laughs> Things scare will them. end badly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't freak them out. Bad things might happen. Whereas with the um, increased speed, it like you said, it's the same lyrics, but it's coming across differently. It's like, oh yeah, all my friends are heathens. This is awesome. Like that's mm -hmm. the subtext of the higher speed. And I would even say that like at this point, like things are starting to happen um, rather than the beginning, which was more of like a warning piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can also read it as like, yeah, you didn't heed the warning. Yeah, so get, yeah, getcha. <laughs> <laughs> My quads burn every time I watch that part. I love this choice of bringing in the take it slow lyric mm -hmm. again. 
it's a very dramatic uh like opposition part to what they were just doing previously <laughs> yep and it's an amazing through line to mm. um tie the whole story together yeah so um another thing in storytelling is um theme and you always want to like revisit the theme but in a new mm -hmm. way to get more from it each time um and then another thing in um oh man uh, in comedy what's really common is to tell the same joke three different times throughout a movie yeah and each one is then funnier because of how it happened before Yep. And I actually, I forget which Rose City it was. It was either Swinging in the Rain or Happiest Event on Earth. But Friday night and Saturday night, Brad either came on early or he like finished. No, he, he walked off stage before the scene was actually over. I think that's what happened. And it was funny the first night. And then he did it unintentionally <laughs> on Saturday. And I'm like, this is comedy gold. And I, I should have told him do it on purpose on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that would have been great. That's funny. So the, the slowing down moment functions as that. Cause they return to it over and over throughout this routine. Mm -hmm. And it really helps tie everything together. Yeah. Um, I want to, can you go back for just yeah. a second? Which part do you want to see? Um, I think it's a little bit forward. Past I'll this. get there. I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> quads burning, quads burning. Pivot. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm totally putting a Ross Geller meme on this in the replay. You're welcome, everyone. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So I, I wanted to kind of show right in here, this whole section like was very smooth. And then we're getting into this right here where we're incorporating some really like sharp movements, some accelerated movements. So like right here with Jordan's arm, he really brings a shoulder into it and accelerates before he like comes up and over. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is also bringing in some of the more chaotic energy. Yep. And this is also the part where we're ramping up for yet another mm -hmm. phrase change. But I love how he also, he emphasizes it with his head. So he lilts yep. to his own right just a little bit and then pops it to his left. Mm -hmm. I also love that Tot was doing something that was kind of a continuation of that like smooth movement that they had previously. Mm -hmm. With her head at least. Yeah. So new phrase change. And this is the part where they're quite literally either avoiding the authorities like, oh no, we can't go that way. Oh no, we can't go that way. Or another interpretation is, <laughs> let's blow this up. <laughs> let's blow this up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're going to blow you up too. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think one thing... I'm... Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say one thing I wanted to mention is that because they have an established storyline it doesn't really matter like the way that you interpret it because it's mm -hmm. going to be something along the lines of what they're wanting you to interpret it anyways mm -hmm. oh that character moment is just so good I know. I love that she's using her head to really emphasize the like craziness of her character because mm -hmm. she's doing it throughout like we just were looking at that head roll when Jordan was coming up and over with the arm mm -hmm.
I love the way when she, we can finally see her eyes again, she's already looking up. I know. Because being able to see the whites of her eyes below uh, her irises is extra crazy making. Mm-hmm. It's excellent. And then this whole time, Jordan's just making eye contact. He's like, <laughs> I got a present <laughs> for you. She's crazy. <laughs> you ready? You ready? <laughs> Oh, this moment is also so great. I want someone in a spotlight Jack and Jill to get Bruno Mars's grenade (laughs) and do this part. Toss. Explode. The way he does it, it makes it look like he's like taking a bite out of an apple actually. (laughs) Right? Yeah, he must. He's probably pulling the yeah. grenade pin with his teeth. Mm-hmm. Like it's that attention to detail that just like mm-hmm. adds so many layers of deliciousness to this choreography. Yeah, and that's definitely something that separates good routines from great routines. And I would even say. Good Jack and Jill's from Great Jack and Jill's is those attention to detail moments. Mm-hmm. I like the choice of keeping her at that same level throughout that turn. Yeah, my brain does, my thighs don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm it makes them, in my knees. <laughs> yeah, it makes them look like they're still moving as one unit again, though. Mm-hmm. Similar to that thing that I couldn't find earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I was distracted. <laughs> and this is another moment. Like they hit similar shapes to this uh, in a couple instances later mm-hmm. in the choreography. Um, so now instead of just latching onto a piece of the music take it slow and actually slowing their movement down they they also have certain shapes that they call back to again and again but with more um, complexity and she even does it at the very beginning of that same move with the head it's that Mm -hmm. same like whipping of the head yeah can we talk about Jordan's excellent snarl (laughs) Oh, look at that. <laughs> so good. The things you see when you frame through. I know. And then this little just tick. Like, I love that Tot incorporated, like, character ticks, mm-hmm. like, um, with her head and her neck. Yeah. All right, so coming up on yet another phrase change, and we're about halfway through the choreography at this point. So here's the phrase change. So it's actually more of a stop than an escalation, but this is the one where it starts getting a little bit more um, staccato, right, in the music, Alicia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It starts getting to the like remixed version of it. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, a great point to do at the midpoint of your Mm -hmm. story. Uh, Because oftentimes um, the midpoint is where the whole nature of the goal changes. So if we think about like E.T., for example, E.T. is a scary alien until the midpoint. And at the midpoint, it's about saving E.T. and getting him home. Mm -hmm. And that's a very distinct change between the first half of the story and the second half of the story. So Mm -hmm. to switch from the original song to the remix at this point is a great story choice. And it makes it more of a natural transition because Mm -hmm. as audience members watching a story, we're more prepared for a a change that's totally appropriate, but um, is still a fairly drastic change. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. It brings a lot more chaotic energy when it gets to this, uh, the way that the remix is cut um, Mm -hmm. because it's breaking up the words a lot more. Yeah. So it, it brings in something that is expected, but also unexpected. Mm -hmm. There's certain um, routines that you'll watch where like uh, like a song will change to an entirely different song like halfway through. Right. That's very and, jarring. Yeah, it is. And a lot of times there is a tie-in, but it takes a little bit longer to understand what the tie-in is. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes there's not necessarily a tie-in. It's just what they wanted to do, which is fine. Um, but because of the fact that this is the same song but we're getting a different version of it and it's a more chaotic version it's like really amping up that energy Mm -hmm. that they are really starting to build already yeah just continuing to escalate the whole Mm -hmm. time and it's keeping us interested right it's not the same because we're getting back to the same lyrics of the all my friends are heathens tickets Mm -hmm. whatever um it's playing through again but it's something different right yep All right, so here we go. This is where we come up on a similar yet different shape from the one I highlighted before. And when she comes up out of this moment, it's the next phrase change. Yep. It doesn't look real when you frame through it so slowly. (laughs) To be fair, it doesn't necessarily when it's at full speed either. (laughs) Like, ah, it's such a great moment. (laughs) All right, so we've got some new lyrics for this section you want to share while they pull on their hair. Yeah, so we're going into it saying, we don't deal with outsiders very well. They say newcomers have a certain smell. You have trust issues, not to mention. They say they can smell your intentions. And we're getting back to like the the way that the music was originally which is back to that kind of smooth um smooth piece Mm -hmm. and (laughs) but this part yeah i'm sorry we're gonna frame through it we weren't gonna frame through Uh, (laughs) it's happening um (laughs) um, but this is them now getting to be like at their character's pinnacle Uh, Because this is the last phrase change before we break into act three. I love the tongue from Jordan. That's happening. Oh, good. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I love it so much. I still need to pitch them the uh, Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin (laughs) exhibition idea because I think would absolutely slay that i could see it yes all right yeah so smell your intentions <laughs> it was far too long <laughs> he's he's snarling again oh doesn't like those intentions anyways yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i can't help it <laughs> I love the side eye that she gives as she's coming around into this. So good. It's almost like a watch your back type of look. Right? Speaking of which. Yep. (laughs) Like, you're my friend, but I kind of also want to kill you. Yeah. Mm -mm. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) This is my favorite part of like her character, this whole thing, because her tick just gets to such an extreme that she's giggly about it. Yep. (laughs) Oh, so good. Like, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't wasn't about to stab you in the back, really. (laughs) Erin said very Harley-esque. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's definitely channeling Harley Quinn. 
perfect inspiration for it too. <laughs> yep. All right, so we are ramping up to another phrase change. Mm -hmm. And this is the like show-stopping one um, of the whole routine, right? I believe so. that's the one with the, yep. the costume change. Okay. Mm -hmm. The costume change. <laughs> <laughs> what else? It's not a costume malfunction. It was on the first run. Oh, sorry. The unraveling of the costume. The unraveling of the costume. <laughs> So um, often the break into count three of a story is uh, referred to as storming the castle. So you gather all your, um, your friends and you get ready and you go to storm the castle to be the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this is just such an excellent way of breaking into act three of the choreography and the story because it's such a, a huge change um, but it, it's just metaphorically on point because it's a story about them escaping. Mm -hmm. um, and now they are like, not just figuratively, but literally escaping their bonds. And this whole phrase is about them wrestling those bonds before they can actually uh, shed them. I was an English maker. maker. I was an English major. I can make anything sound academic. I could write a paper on this. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing they had to have choreographed this with uh, a mock up of mm -hmm. the costumes. Yeah. To understand how to not kill each other. Yeah, and for it to still look cool. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly, uh, the malfunction that resulted in Tatiana getting stitches that had literally never happened before. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and that's why it was just so shocking for yeah. everyone because they they did not take this kind of trust on a costume lightly, and for yeah. it to just fail so spectacularly was not <laughs> some like they had. Mm -hmm they did everything they could to prevent that and yet it still happened. Mm -hmm. Oh man, as someone who like, if a corner of a rug is underturned and I can't handle it, seeing the wind in the, in the, <laughs> And the binding is just like <laughs> driving me bonkers. My brain is also a fun place. <laughs> but I love how like entangled she is in it now. Yeah. It makes it much more dramatic when she ends up just taking it off and yep. breaking free of it. And so throughout this whole phrase, they're escalating everything that they're doing with it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's trust right there. <laughs> so if you think of each phrase, it can each phrase can have a beginning, middle, and an end. Its own mini story arc mm -hmm. and so if you think of the wrap up to a phrase change as a mini act three that's just another way you can think about it so mm -hmm. there, like this just keeps getting more complicated and escalating yeah Aaron said I'm applauding the costume design it's insane yeah right <laughs> it's very well done um and actually that toe rise that she just did is something that uh, can be done on your own. However, because she has the assistance of the uh, cords that are right up under her shoulders, it helps her get up a little bit further. 
and she can create a slightly different shape than if she were doing it 100 percent of her own power yeah because if you do this on your own you have to bring the head back up over the feet and you have to drop it really like far back um and have like a really like c shape in the back Mm -hmm. i've done these before (laughs) yeah (laughs) you couldn't tell (laughs) Uh, but you also have to have your feet wider apart to do them um Mm -hmm. if you're doing them on your own so it's interesting this costume is taking a decent amount of weight um, Mm -hmm. but also really assisting in this moment uh, to make it a really cool shape that you could not have done otherwise Mm -hmm. and um if we go back to like theme so the the main lyric of this song is all my friends are heathens right Mm -hmm. so it's implying that yeah we're crazy but we're friends and so um not only is this a story about them escaping Arkham, but it's a story of their relationship and how much they trust each other mm-hmm. while they're trying to escape. Yeah. This part reminds me of that, like, group exercise they make you do where you like standing in a circle and you like grab hands and then you have to all unwind yourself into a circle Uh (laughs) uh-huh i hate those things (laughs) oh i love this unique um Mm -hmm. One footed turn. And yeah. if I remember correctly, is this another phrase yeah. change? Yeah. It is. It, we're going yeah. back into um, the All My Friends Are Heathens, but it's uh, once again the like remixed version of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and basically, they're, they take the last couple phrases and they use that like remixed version of it. So we're getting to like peak chaotic energy here with the music (laughs) (laughs) Yep. because previously we've had some sections of it um but we've gone back to like the original version of the song every time Mm -hmm. but now we're just going with the remixed chaotic version yeah the physics of this is so interesting because of Mm -hmm. how they're wrapped around her back yeah. And, and, and there's like a tension this way. And, mm-hmm. and so the, the centripetal force of this one footed turn is different from like a standard one where you're just hand to hand. Yeah. Um, I, I like totally want to know what that feels like because I bet it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't know about you, but my shoulders get tired doing one footed, whether I'm leading or following. <laughs> and this kind of distribute some of the weight directly to the back bypassing the shoulder yeah. and I'm like oh that looks that looks nice <laughs> her face coming out of this <laughs> excellent and I love that it's one of the most kind of crazy facial choices that she's done so far because we we're now at that peak chaotic energy of the music so she's after she's coming out of that she's really like honing into it with just the character Mm -hmm. i love that jordan's just walking around (laughs) i know isn't he isn't he actually like skipping he's like yeah yeah kind (laughs) of It looks very, um, mm, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> looks very threatening. It's a very threatening skip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a don't rain on my parade or I'll blow you up kind of skip. <laughs> All right. So we are ramping up to yet another phrase change. And this is the, the doozy phrase change. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the story where they finally officially break free literally from their bonds Um, and the music speeds up for the final two phrases yeah 
there's some added layers in um, the instrumentals that's happening. <clears throat> and they're free! Everybody run! <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what you gonna do about it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> And you can just see how, like, we don't need the music playing to know that there was a huge energy shift just because mm -hmm. of how much they're skipping into the <laughs> New Yorker. Skipping threateningly. Yes. <laughs> it's the newest dance craze, skipping <laughs> threateningly. It's like it's like those horror films where the 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 scary ghosts that can kill you are children. I hate those. They're terrifying. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I like that what we're doing here now is we're like they're challenging the audience almost by the way mm -hmm. that they're now projecting so much um, and have so much energy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah because like at this point in the story these characters have succeeded at their goal they are 100 mm -hmm. percent free to live their crazy heathen lives mm -hmm. and they're like yeah we won <laughs> like, like literally <laughs> posing it's like <laughs> it's almost like they're asking so what are you going to do about it <laughs> yep So another thing that um, just thinking, cause like not everybody does choreography, but this kind of phrasing is really helpful to study uh, mm -hmm. when doing your own social dancing um, and competitive dancing, uh, because not only is it incredibly musical and powerful and you can tell stories with your dancing, but it gives you breaks. Yeah. So by them alternating between more lower energy phrasing and higher energy phrasing, it allows them physically to be able to sustain this high energy ending because they weren't going at this speed. They weren't going this hard this whole yeah. time. Yep. That was great. We're, we're going to look at that one again. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much head movement. So much. And I like that we're now doing a lot more tricks that aren't normal, you know, tricks that you would see aren't like dips or whatever. There's mm -hmm. something different, unique. Um, because I think that at this point, it's like they're challenging, you know, the audience, like, what are you going to do about it? We can do all of this. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's like showing everything that they can do now that they're free, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jordan's face. <laughs> so good. <laughs> all right. Two more sets of eight. Home stretch. And see how they gave themselves just a really quick break again. Mm -hmm. Which also gives the audience, us, a break. Yeah. It gives our eyes a place to rest for a second. Mm -hmm. And to take it in. And that contrast of having that moment of just pause before this ending makes this ending more powerful. Yep. Who needs a grenade when you've got Tatiana's legs? <laughs> And scene. <laughs> and 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 Stephen just makes me so happy every single yep. time. So good. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> I think I can hear Robert snoring on the sofa in the next room. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I was that tired when we started, but now I'm yeah. hyper because we got to talk about storytelling and dancing and music, I <laughs> and I am high off of that now. It is excellent. 
Plus, this was just a great routine to go over. Yeah. We haven't done Jordan and Tot yet together. <laughs> so I think it was a great choice to do mm-hmm. it with theirs. Yeah. It is definitely my favorite routine of theirs. Yeah. Uh, the only one that tops it for me is Gravity. Yeah, that's a but good I'm, one too. I'm, a, I'm a sucker for crying, apparently. I think <laughs> it makes me bawl my eyes out every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, chat pop up. <laughs> Ditto. Yes. Good. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I, think, I think I'll just say go buy Rosie Thor's books, Tarnish Her the Stars, and you can pre order Fire Becomes Her as of the other day. I already did it. I like throwing money in her face. She is excellent. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, Fire Becomes Her, I think, is takes place in like a alternate like fantasy version of 1920s i think so like speakeasies and stuff and magic and i'm like yes yeah that sounds really interesting (laughs) (laughs) yes please (laughs) that's one of the things when you know a a writer and you know like the whole project from like the beginning like she told me about it back in the day and i'm like ken has now (laughs) (laughs) but but no i shall wait (laughs) She has to make it perfect. I know. <laughs> uh, she's also a great human to follow on Twitter if uh, y'all are Twitter people. So what, what on earth are we talking about next week? So I can, you know, pitch it. Um, I believe we're, are we starting musicality series? Uh, yes. We are talking about organic and lyrical musicality next week. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I think we're doing, are we doing three episodes? Uh, in a row? I think so. Uh, yes. And yeah. then after that, it's layered musicality. And then after that, it's the hierarchy of musicality. So this is our musicality boot camp. Intro. Yeah. 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 We thought heathens would be a good way to kind of like bridge the gap into that. Yeah. Yeah. It is a routine, but I think it's a, a really great storytelling piece to look yeah. at. Aaron asks, what's organic musicality? Would you like to <laughs> give them a teaser for that episode, Alicia? I can. Um, basically, it is not forcing anything um, and trying to do what goes with the music. Um, a lot of times you see people that are trying to do things that look cool uh during their you know dance or whatever or trying to just do cool things and it doesn't really fit with the music or with how the song sounds you know all of that kind of stuff so we're just yeah. gonna be talking about all of that and when you have <laughs> because two partners, that is one of my biggest pet peeves <laughs> when you have two partners that have two separate ideas woo, train wreck yeah yeah mm. So we're, I think next week we're looking at Benintessa. For those of you watching the recording, if you enjoyed this and want to support us doing this, uh, we've got two tiers on Patreon. One's just for $5 for appreciating all of these free shows that we do. And then if you want to get extra nerdy with us, we've got a $35 tier where we legit are your teachers every month. So go and check that out on patreon.com slash nerdy WCS. Yep. We shall see see you all next time. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, everyone. (laughs) All right. So next, I'm going to drop in the chat the link to Jordan and Tats. Tats? Tats. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to drop the link in the chat. Well, that's because I said chat and I rhymed. Yeah. Okay. Although one continuity error, Jordan's hair is much longer and taller for the performance <laughs> so like, i don't know about you guys but i am awful with continuity errors i see them and they stick out to me like sore thumbs when i'm watching tv shows and movies and it's terrible yeah. i'm i can be an annoying person to watch stuff with because i just know too much and i see too much and <sighs> you'll be fair they both have different hair styles mm. going on <laughs> I know. Let's just pretend that it's we'll a, a week or two later. Things have, you know, changed a little bit with their hair. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.
blue steel a la Jordan Frisbee. 